Hi. Sweet, how are you? Good. I'm waiting. We're waiting for Tanya. Okay. Okay. How's everything in Morocco? Good, good. Ah, she's here. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hey, Tanya. Hi, hi. Nice to see you guys. Girls. Yes, yes. Good morning. <laughs> it's morning here. You too. So, welcome, both of you. Thank welcome you. To, to Tanya. Welcome to Amina. So, hi, everyone. This is uh, Yasmin Hatimi. I'm part of the Cause Collective. Um, for those who don't know us, Cause is a is a collective uh, formed by four Moroccan photographers. We are based in Casablanca, and in Morocco, sorry. And our aim is to create a debate around photography and to create a structure where we can evolve as um, photographers and professionally. We decided to organize some talks during the year. This is our second talk. And today I welcome Tanya Trabusi and Amina Kadus. Hi. <laughs> and I'm going to make a quick introduction about the, um, these two photographers so you get to know them. So Amina, that is uh, here today with us, is a Cairo-based artist. Uh, she explores concepts of memory. Her work has been exhibited in London, Boston, Paris, and Mali. She was part of the Bamako Biennale of Photography, and she's a grantee of the AB ADPP uh, program this year. Uh, Tanya lives uh, between uh, Austria and Lebanon. Her work explores highly personal themes of belonging, identity, and memory as well as the sociological stigmas relating to female identity. Her work has been exhibit, exhibited internationally, both solo and um, group show. And she received, uh, she was awarded the Bogosian Foundation Prize. So hi, girls. <laughs> um, so I have my first question for you is very basic. So. How did you become photographers or why did you choose to be photographers? You can start, Amina. <laughs> so so um, it's interesting because um, my journey with photography uh, actually uh, started way back when I was in school. Um, on my, my way to school, I would uh, always pass by certain neighborhoods that I was always fascinated by. And I felt that um, I'd always wanted to explore that. And as I took this route, things started to change over time. So I yeah. think my, my journey with photography really started in parallel with my own fascination of the changes in the city, its places and its spontaneity. And kind of like the feeling that I have to cope with this rapid change, I have to really capture instantly what's happening daily. And um, in a way, like kind of being uh, in a race with time, you know, like uh, um, I really felt the urge the urgent need to kind of start searching for the stories I've always heard about from my own ancestors and kind of searching for those places that kind of really filled my own imagination. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it came like a tool that kind of immortalizes and pauses life for me and pauses time. And uh, I saw it as a way of like, it's, it's like something you capture instantly and becomes like this object in your hand which kind of outlives its own owners. Um, and also, this kind of changed over time with me. Like, I would, um, I can talk about this a lot. Because <laughs> no, it, go ahead. Because, because first, it started um, with my own fascination of the changes. And then I just realized how a photography can be an object of memory that is embraced yeah. Yeah, in, in my own hands. And it can also be a part of someone's life, a part of my own ancestor's life, uh, which I can keep forever. I can kind of imagine if, imagine if they're living with me through these images. And so um, for me, it was like also a way of questioning and searching for, for what's, what have been, like what, what passed and what, what's yet to come. Um, and it, it's also um, was a very, very important tool of connection mm -hmm. between my own roots. Um, 
and also a healing journey, um, I have to say, because um, because when I started uh, delving into a person's stories, which was like four years ago, it uh, it was because of a big gap inside me. Yeah. So okay. so so it was. Um, so I'd have to say um, it's a journey, you know. It's, it's a, a journey. journey. Yeah. It's like you're recording. Yes, exactly. It's yeah. like you're recording. Yeah. And you, Tanya, how did you? Well, I um, I remember um, getting my very first little camera when I was four or five, five years old, I think. So I I I counted it as the start of my journey back then, and um, and then when I grew up, I I always had to take photos of everything around me. I was practically documenting. Uh, everything that was around me, and, uh, and later on, when I decided to practice it more professionally, it was um, it was in 2006, I think, it really developed as an idea. Mm -hmm. When uh, when I there was the conflict uh, in Lebanon, in summer of 2006, and uh, whatever it was, mm -hmm. uh, there were problems and. It was kind of a war situation, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I started photographing the empty streets because everything was so empty, and in a city like Beirut, it's kind of awkward to have empty streets. Okay. So I decided, or I felt, actually this is something I want to practice more, um, more extensively than just for fun, you know, so that's when it started, and I... Um, I started shooting for different <coughs> NGOs, um, okay. and then it developed. And, you know, my path yes. developed in a totally different point than I am right now. So uh, that's when I started, actually, around 2006, 2007. Okay, great. So I'm gonna. I want to show both of your works today. I'm gonna. Uh, I chose uh, two series of yours. And I chose you, you both girls, because I think I have said that <laughs> a lot. But you have similar universe in the sense that you you dig into the past, uh, you travel into the past, memory, nostalgia, and uh, all those themes. Um, so yeah, I want to show your your words. I'm gonna start with uh, Amina's work. Um, so I'm gonna. Oh, I have to share my screen first. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay. My screen is shared. Yeah, okay. So Amina, while I, I'll present the, the work, can you talk um, about uh, this series? Sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so the, the title, if, if my grandfather had written me a letter, yeah. um, I'm gonna just open it with the two seconds. Okay, you can tell us yeah, a little bit. Over. So for this uh, project, um, this was one of the first projects that um, that I did um, concerning personal stories and my ancestors. And I think um, when I when I look at this project now, um, it kind of for me this project started in a triggering moment. And I always believe that um, that each one of us have a triggering moment that kind of really affected them to to kind of take a certain path. And um, this. Um, this project happened, um, basically, uh, we had our family home in Mahalla and I was, we were supposed to, as um, my, my parents, we were supposed to go and basically unpack everything from this house because it's going to be sold to new owners and it's not going to be there anymore. So this journey was kind of like a way for me to, to say goodbye to those memories and, and, and this, uh, my childhood uh, past. And so um, I hadn't visited this house since like eight years, since 2018, uh, since my grandparents had passed away. And so for me, it was, um, I wasn't really sure what 
where I was going. I, I knew that I was going to this family home, but I'm not really sure what I would be seeing or what would I be feeling as well. And so it was, um, so basically when I arrived there, we, we collected everything and we took everything. And before, before we were leaving my, um, that was in, in my parents' apartment, which, which was in the third floor in the family home. And then before leaving, my dad was like, do you want to check your grandparents' room? And I told them, okay, like, why not? I would love to see it. To see it. And then after um, my, my father opened um, their apartment, it was like literally like a, an open museum for me, like a museum of time. Literally everything was left the same. My aunt refused to, to basically move everything to place. And so uh, this is when I just felt like the need to the urge to start talking about this. And at first, I didn't really know what to do, basically. Like, I, 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 I will not say that, oh, I have this idea. No, it's really more about the process. And so this is why I always think that any series comes with the process. It's like the triggering moment. It's like a question. And, and it's like something you found. And then you start to dig deeper mm -hmm. and, uh, and start to, to understand the gap and ask yourself questions and, and, and know what, what it is. How am I even related to this? Uh, because for me, when I when I started to unpack all of my grandfather's belongings and look at all of his photographs, I started to see a different person, which I never I felt like I know. So so it was kind of getting to know him more through his left behind objects, which was for me such a fascinating and yet at the same time a heartbreaking experience. Yeah. But did did, did you I, get to know him in? Person? Yes, I saw him. Yeah, yeah, I lived with him until I was like until my first year of college. Okay. But but my relationship with him wasn't as as close as it is now. Believe it or not, it's because it's, it's and, and, and for me this was a major question. It's like how can you know a person through his objects and through his yeah. surrounding, and you can actually sit and talk with him. Yeah. And I was closer to my grandmother more, and so for me this this whole. Uh, project of if my grandfather had written me a letter was basically a dialogue between me and him through his left behind mm -hmm. object and and trying to to think to imagine if he had basically uh, written me a letter through everything that he's left behind okay. uh kind of reimagining the stories and, and re retelling it to myself in a different way and kind of uh and for me it was like kind of a dialogue between me and myself and then when i did this project uh, this installation, I, I just realized that it's actually a white, like it, it moved beyond, it became a dialogue uh, between the audience and the room and the object itself and, and, and their own past as well. Uh, okay. Because this can be the only mine. So. Okay, great. So thank you for, for, for your presentation. We will get back again to, the, to talk about this series. Now I uh, would like to show Tanya's work. So um, the project you, I'm going to show you is called um, Lost Strange Things. Um, and same Tanya while I, I'll show the, the pictures. Um, da, 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 da. Well, um I, uh, I totally relate to what Amina said, actually. I relate to a lot of things uh, she explained. Um, the project started in my head briefly before my father passed away in 2013. And I wasn't really sure how it would look um, in terms of what I would choose, what I would include. Would I include family archives or objects or not? And um, I knew I only knew it would be about the search for home and the notion of home. And I tried to find a definition of the word home or of the notion of home. Um, and when my father passed away, the same kind of the same thing happened to me. I found I found photos and objects. And in this, in this stuff, in the, I was uh, I was responsible to, to clear up the house and, you know. And I also got to know him through finding letters and small souvenirs from all his trips. I got to know him in a very different way than I knew him when he was still alive. 
So this whole project developed in a very interesting way um, when I found all these, all the, it was a whole bag of family archives of his photos, his life basically. And uh, I included them in the book. I did a book of the, of the series as well. Um, and I also, yeah, I also, because I just saw um, photos from my Austrian family archives, uh, I just, uh, I, um, I wanted also to explore a bit my, my, my two-sided origins, which uh, I found, and I still kind of find kind of conflicting, because my mother is Austrian, my father was Lebanese, so it was two cultures that really clashed together, kind of, also mentality-wise. So I tried in this. Pro I think I tried the, in this project to uh, to merge both of them, both of my roots together, and to find to define the notion of home. But I don't think I really managed to define home until now. It's really difficult, you know, yeah. because we feel constantly torn between two places, and we have a part of this and a part of that, and so I don't think. I don't. I don't want to say I didn't succeed with the project, but I don't think I um, I achieved my uh, my uh, my the goal that I initially had in mind. So yeah, it was. I it, I think it's still a work in progress. Although yeah. that series is finished, is like chapter closed, and I moved on to other stuff. But in my head and in my in my life, it's still a constant search for home. And I'm also very happy uh, about uh, having memories on paper, you know, with my family archive that is huge. Actually, the Austrian family archive is really huge, and the Lebanese from my father's side is not that big, but very valuable, like, very, very important to me because it says a lot. And I mean, I never, I never really had the chance to ask my father very detailed questions about his life. Very rarely, I have the opportunity. So it gives me a lot of answers with archive and that's why I feel archives are so important because yeah. they really carry memories throughout generations. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Yeah. Important. So I, I see both both of your work are really intimate. Um, and how how emotion emotionally you get involved. I mean this is a lot of uh, part of yourself that you put in there. So at what point is emotionally challenging or? I mean, I like, sorry, I mean, I find no, no, go, go for it. Uh, I usually can't really work if it's not about, if it's not tied to emotions or personal experiences or personal, um, connections to the subject or to the to the body of work so I think for me it's very important to have a have a personal and emotional tie to the project yeah. in my personal work mm -hmm. sometimes of course it's a different story but we're talking now about the person yeah of course, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah I kind of echo what um, Tanya said I think um, I think um, it really has to come from a personal connection first, um, because I think this is where um, where it, you can tell the story differently, and where you have your own eye and you have your own um, emotions in it, which is obvi obviously all of us are different uh, when we're approaching such stories. Um, but I think also for me, it's like a gradual process of emotion. It's like a roller coaster ride, you know. Like at the beginning, you're in the process of discovery. The process of um, really trying to understand uh, yourself and like what it is that you just found or what it is that you just basically explored and and how it is that I fit in all of this in the spectrum and um, and then it kind of at first it's not really it's intense yet it's a bit confusing but then as you dig deeper it becomes really intense mm -hmm. I have to say one moment for me um, going to the family home and, and trying to photograph like I just felt like it was like a burden at first, I was so excited because oh, I, I just, it's like a treasure, you know. You just fell on this treasure, and then it keeps getting real that they actually left, that they're not there anymore, that they're. Yeah. You just feel the gap deeper. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it's it's uh, it's a it's a long journey, and it's also stages. 
Um, I think I think yeah, it's, it's it's hard when you're in the middle of it because this is when really it's like um, really uh, raw. Like you're literally uh, the the most vulnerable part of it, you know. And then um, and also I believe this is when exactly um, the true part of the story comes out. It's like why are you actually doing it? This is where the the answers come out. In. You like, I would also have to say, say like Tanya, I haven't found the answers yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's it's a process and it's a journey which I'm kind of um, I'm enjoying it and and I'm and it's helping me as well. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's evolving. It's evolving. Yeah. But did yeah. you? But could you define now because Tanya is still working on it? But could you define home today, or you are still? So for me, I realized um, that home for me is is really about the people. At first, I thought, oh, the. So I'll tell you. So so when I found um, when I found my grandfather's belongings and I found everything that's basically in the same spot and it didn't move, and this has stayed for like uh, four years now. Now we have basically unpacked everything from the house and it's literally just white walls. When, now, now when I go visit the home, I I don't feel it's home anymore. I just don't feel like I can actually stay there more than more than a few minutes because it when when they had their things there, even if they weren't there, there was something part of part of them that I that I felt around them. Uh, so yeah, so I really kind of came to the conclusion that basically home is really about the is at least for me, and and, and it's uh, it's a question that I've been trying to resolve all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's also like um, photographing the absence of these people, yes. you know. So it's it's their things. Like I remember photographing my father's closet with all the clothes still hanging. In there. I think that was the, the hardest part of it, um, because his clothes still smelled of him, and you know, and they were just hanging there. And maybe he just wore them a month earlier. So so we were photographing the absence home or something that meant home to you yeah i think it's i think that's a very difficult part you know yeah. yes i agree yeah. and how how did your families react to, to the project i mean i mean you, you were talking about your grandfather it, it it's your father's father or? yes and how father. how did he he i so. guess he encouraged you and he was uh, I mean, you you did a huge recording work, you know. So they must be they helped you. How did you they react? So um, at first, honestly, they didn't really understand what I was doing. Really, like yes. to be to be very clear, like they 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 saw that I would do those trips like back and forth between Cairo to Mahala. It's like a four-hour drive, and like they don't really understand what what am I doing and why why am I so interested by all these basically just old stuff and so um they started to understand when i did the exhibition if my grandfather had written me a letter because they realized that through this exhibition it's like i'm basically bringing them back to life and and giving them another life uh through different forms and different elements and so so uh for them it was more um during this exhibition they really tried to um to understand and and it was so interesting seeing their own facial expressions because it, it was really um, kind of a moment of revolution. Um, and, and also, I think, um, because after this, I dealt, I did more into other projects, which is going back to my, my current project now, uh, the white gold. Uh, my dad works in the cotton business, and so I think for me, this was a, was a way of connecting more with him. Because he's helping me in this project, actually, kind of okay. through, through different um, sources, um, helping me have certain access to certain places. So now he's understanding, basically, and helping me. And also my aunts, they're also helping me, like, yeah. kind of, they found something, oh, they call me, like, found this picture and they send it to me. And so it's like, um, it's, as I said, it's, 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 a, it's a way of connecting. Yeah. It, it came totally away. Yeah, yeah, completely. And you, Tanya, how did you... Um, I think they were quite happy to have a kind of family album plus photos yeah. I took, you know. Yeah. 
No, they were they were happy. I, I mean, yeah, they were happy. To, they looked through the book because I um, I kind of concluded the project with the with publishing a book about it, and they looked through it. And I like to, to watch them looking at the book because they had like their eyes shining and smiling. It was it was nice. Yeah, yeah. nice. So I have a te- oh, sorry. I have a technical question for you both. Um, how do you put a title into your work? How did you get to put the title in the in your project, in your series? Well, the, the title case, the title is is a is a key in a work. So how did you how do you manage? For my, for my project, actually, it was not me. It was uh, Raya Bagran who wrote a text for my book, and she titled the text "Lost Strange Things," okay. and that's how. And I really liked it, and that's how it, uh, it uh, developed. But for my later project um, that came afterwards, or for my current projects, for example, uh, for my current project that's called Beirut Recurring Dream, it mm-hmm. comes from the fact that it is a recurring dream for me. Like I spent I spent quite a while in Austria over the last winter during the lockdown and every time I closed my eyes I saw Beirut in front of my eyes. And it was really like a recurring dream. I couldn't help it. And that's that's how the title came about. Um, and it for me titles are the most important, yes, and it definitely always has a tie to the a personal experience or something someone said or wrote to me yeah. a bit romantic maybe but it has to it's like the, the crown of the project you know the yeah the crown exactly and yeah. Yamina how do you so um, so for me the title of the first project uh, my gra- if my grandfather had written me a letter it was also part of the process so um, so uh, basically this project when I um, when I um wanted to do it I created a proposal and I and I gave it um, I applied to um, of something else being Ali in Cairo which was happening in 2018 and so the theme of the pro the, the whole exhibition was what if basically just the okay. just basically what if and so um, so for me it was uh, it, it came out of the out of that theme like what if my grandfather had written me a letter um, and so it was uh, yeah, so it came out basically out of this, uh, the, the concept note of the exhibition. But for the other projects, um, for example, uh, my current one, White Gold. So when talking about titles, it's very, basically, as you said, it, the title is, is the most important, one of, one of the most important elements in the story because it grabs you. And so, um, so in the White Gold project, um, I wanted, I didn't want the Arabic to be the literal, basically, uh, translation of the English, and so, um, and this is why I think it's very interesting to have this, like, when you're doing a title of a project, it's more about the meaning, and so the Arabic meaning of the project is basically called Nasik Hai, which is, um, which is kind of like, basically, it's, uh, when I was brainstorming a lot about the whole meaning of the project and the narrative I was following, it's like a thread, a living thread that I'm trying to extend, a thread from the past to the present that is alive through me. So, um, so yeah, so each, each product comes with its own meaning and, uh, and um, yeah, it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's in the process as well. And another thing that is important uh, when you finish a photography series is how do you present it to the public? How do you think of that? And how, how do you, how did you do to present your work? Because how, I mean, when you, are doing the photography series, are you seeing the end? Or when it's finished, then you s- imagine how it's gonna be? Or how, I- how is the process to, how do you present the work to the public? Well, I go quite uh, with the flow when I, honestly, I don't plan so much. But I, you, did a, you did a book, right? Of the lost yes, So that's the way. I, that I didn't plan it from the start. It, okay. It, the idea came through the process while I was working on it. Um, I thought, how do I present it? And I thought, I really want to make a book. I want to have something 
that lasts in my hand, you know, that I can touch, mm -hmm. that I can place in my home, or that people can take with them to their home. Um, but I didn't know that in the beginning. I didn't even know. I only knew I wanted to shoot in Lebanon and Austria. But what I do usually is I walk around and I see what comes to me, what I see. If something speaks to me, I photograph it. I don't plan, I don't make a plan today, I'm going to this place and I shoot this frame. I, I can't work like that. Yeah. So it's to be happening as I go. And sometimes weeks comes where I don't work on any, uh, on, where I don't take any photo. Yeah. You know, it has to, I have to feel it, otherwise the photo won't speak to the viewer. Yeah. And you, Amina, how do you, I, I think the, the work uh, that we, uh, if my grandfather was an installation. I exactly. I think this wasn't actually, um, I had planned it before that I wanted, to, I wanted it to be an installation. But honestly, I didn't have the space, like I didn't have the, the measurements of the space. So, so initially the project was supposed to happen on shelves. Um, and, and so when, when I was talking to the curator, um, he told me, like, when we were having the discussion, that basically the the whole Pinali, like each one of us, will have a room. So, uh, so I thought, okay, um, I'm gonna make it into a room installation. I'm not gonna make it into shelves because basically I wanted the space to kind of encapsulate the audience itself. So um, this was when I started thinking about, okay, if it's going to be a room, I need to basically think of how will I fill the walls because this is one of the main elements. Uh, and so um, it, it's all, it, it came step, yeah, step by step. And um, for me, um, each, each fragment or each part of the room, I thought about it very specifically, honestly. It was very, like I had to plan it from the beginning. Um, and so when I, for example, when I was thinking of the two photographs that the wallpapers that I had placed, mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was my a photograph plan which was the only thing that I had left from them. Like this was the actual thing they gave me before they passed away. So for me, it was a very special okay. picture. And the other picture was a, uh, was a photograph of the, the, um, the uh, um, kind of like where the guests would stay in the house, like the salon. And uh, this room was always closed. I never actually went in this room before. Only once when I was a kid and I can't even remember. So for me, it was very... <laughs> It was like also um, fun, you know, like, wow, like a pleasure find. So, so I wanted to create this kind of uh, time machine where you would enter, you would walk in this empty space um, and uh, kind of, yeah, look at, look at bits and pieces. Because for me also, photography is like a detail of your life. It's like a one angle, it's like a one perspective. And this is how I wanted to imagine the whole room. It's like you're, you're going in and as you walk in, you would kind of find, uh, like, find something and uh, yeah. write a little fast or... Um, there was, there was in the Stellantian uh, music as well. Yes, there was, uh, I had, I had Om Kulsum's uh, music uh, turning, yeah, playing. <laughs> it's so funny because in the beginning, like the opening night, uh, people called it Om Kulsum's house. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and um, I think it. Uh, yeah, I, I I'm obsessed a bit by Mkusu, but also Mkusu has, has a very important resemblance for my grandparents because they all they like to attend the the concerts of Mkusu, and it usually happens the first Thursday of every month. So yeah, so it okay. was. And at the end of the, of the picture you sent me, there is people uh, writing. Yes. Yeah. So. so uh, so basically, part of this also installation is that I wanted, so as my grandfather had written me a letter, I wanted people to also write a letter to their past. And I didn't oh really God. put, like, it doesn't mean like a letter to a person. Yeah. Uh, I made it very open. It's like you can basically write a letter to anything. It can be like an object from your school days. It could be like a corner in your room which you miss. And it was so interesting to see how people interacted because this, this was when, you really felt the difference in time. Basically, when you write a text message, you're just abbreviating in the message. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. writing it so fast, you don't really think about it. But when people actually sat and thought about, okay, those are the, wor the words they're going to write, like putting pen to paper, and you have only a certain space you have to fill, you really have to think what you want to tell and what you want to, who you want to write it to. So uh, it was also a way of kind of slowing down a bit, pausing time, yeah. which was very important of the old installation 
Okay, great. Great, and now, uh, what are your projects now? Um, uh, you you did the last your last series white gold in the during the ADPP. Are you is it finished or are you? It's still not finished. It's an ongoing project, long term a bit. Okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna see some yes. pictures of it. Um, give me one second. So yeah, so um, so this project also. Is it ongoing? Start, yes, it's ongoing, and um, um, it's it has so many as like so many elements in it because um, it started off basically with just a question of the identity of my own identity as an Egyptian and what does it mean to be an Egyptian uh, in the midst of everything changing around me, and in the midst of also basically of kind of like the process of decontrition a bit of what we're going through and. Like the um, the changes that are happening, and so um, um, the project is, and I would call it like a like a, another chapter of my long term uh, project of my own personal memories and my own personal ancestors. Because my grand, um, I, my um, my my father works works in the cotton business, and my gr uh, grandfather and my great grandfather. So my three ancestors basically have worked in the cotton business, and so. So this has been something that's part of like the, the thread of the family, mm -hmm. and so uh, it was a way for me to uh, to dig in deeper, also on another on another um, um, on like a more universal note of 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 um, of the Egyptian identity within my own uh, personal identity and kind of tracing um, the Egyptian history through the cotton history. Um, so yeah, so it's 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 a long term because also now. Now the government is is really um, interested in bringing back the white gold of the past and kind of investing so much in, in it and building uh, huge factories and kind of um, bringing back the farmer to, to plant more cotton. So uh, I'm kind of um, documenting this process as well. Okay. So yeah, it's, um, it's growing. Yeah, it's growing. And you, Tanya, what is your you're doing a lot, um, you have a project in on I, gold. Uh, yeah, I'm working on um, on this uh, project called Beirut Recurring Dream, and, um, and it's basically a portrait of Beirut in all kinds of... I just started it, so I'm not sure yet how it will, in which way it will evolve, but for now I'm just, um, I'm photographing, I'm trying to photograph this small, these small little things that make the character of Beirut. Again, by walking around or encountering people, be it like the small weekend, the small shop down your house, or uh, a jasmine tree in front of a house, stuff like that. Um, and I, I also, I also, I want to include again old photos that my father had uh, of Beirut and of his life here during the sixties. During when he was younger, in the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, and the sea, of course, is so important as well in Beirut. I feel like I'm, we're really lucky to have the sea, even though we don't have proper access to it. Um, but uh, it's it's good to have the sea nearby. Yeah. And these are what you see right now is um, taken right after the explosion yeah. of the last year. I want to document this definitely also because I don't want to romanticize Beirut only. You know, it's Beirut is very photogenic in my view. Yeah. Even though it's not pretty, but it's extremely photogenic. So you tend to sometimes romanticize it and um, throw only beautiful corners and parts like um, your sporting club. This is actually an old photo of my. Can you go? Yeah. But this is a photo of my uh, father exporting with a friend, drinking Almaza beer. Um, so yeah, I think, um, I don't know yet exactly where I'm going with this project, but I started it, and I'm shooting with all kinds of cameras, uh, yeah. with the Fox 6, 4, 5, I think it's called. I'm really not good with equipment names. <laughs> don't worry. Video format from the 80s, 120mm film camera. I'm shooting with my phone, yeah. I'm shooting video with my phone, 
I'm using uh, old photos, found photos. Um, yeah, it's, it's an homage to Beirut. It's an homage to Beirut. Beirut. But did, did you start it like uh, before the, the, the explosion? No, no I... Uh, just after. It, um, um, I mean, I've always photographed Beirut. It was not like I'm starting now. It just came into... It just, into a, into an idea when I was spending uh, the last winter away um, and I missed it so much so I thought I really need to uh, I really need to portray this uh, city especially now that things are going yeah. so down the drain basically and things are so bad and uh, I want I, I still want to capture the little moments we have that make us happy you know like how the how the sun sets, for example, the light it gives, the sunrise, the, the small friendliness of the the guy at the bakery that it sends me a manushi, for example, you know, these things uh, that make us go through the day a bit, a tiny bit more positive. Yeah. That carry us through despite all the problems that are happening. Of course, because there is beauty, but you have to. And you have to look for it, you have yeah. to, because it's, it's there, not, and yeah. it's not served on a platter anymore like it used to be. Mm -hmm. You have to search and look very closely, you know. And I think I think beauty is important, uh, be it visually or emotionally. It is very important to, to keep us going, you know. And uh, I think it reflects in my work. Some people like it, some don't. But I need to, like, I, I'm, the, I'm always on the search for some kind of beauty. Even in the ugly, even in the ugliness, we find sometimes beauty. You know? But you're, you're bringing us like picture from, from the inside. You know, it's not a, a stereoty stereotypical. I'm trying. Uh, yes. Work about. Beirut or the way I would see Beirut on newspapers or on TV. No, I, yeah, have, I have the real insight of... Yeah, of, of that's, and why, that's what I'm aiming at, yes. That, that's very important today yeah. that we that we tell our story. Yes, I'm trying to, to document everyday life, mm -hmm. you know? Like the, the things that would not appear in a newspaper. I'm not doing... Uh, I'm not shooting in a documentary style or, you know, I'm just shooting the way I see things. The way you live. My eyes, your eyes. Your eyes. Yeah. And I photograph them. That's it, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. So, we are arriving at the, the end of our conversation and I asked you, both of you, to send me three picture images that had a lot of impact on you. I know it's a difficult... <laughs> one because there is so much images that we can choose uh, but um, I'm going to show the three that you chose and I want you to tell me a little bit more about uh, the images so I'm gonna we're gonna start with uh, Tanya so let me see so I made a selection of the selection that you sent me okay <laughs> Yeah, because I sent you too many, right? <laughs> yeah, but they were no. very I think, inspiring. I think Dalia was asking a question. I don't know how you access the messages. Huh? Wait, but wait. I, I'll get back to that uh, just after. Uh, she's asking uh, if we can, uh, if they can ask questions. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah. Of course. Um, so, um, hmm. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. So I want you. So this is a picture of Larry Sultan. Is, is that Larry yeah. Sultan? Yes, yeah. uh, he's an American photographer. And this uh, series is uh, this photo is. Uh, can you keep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, this photo is taken from a series called Pictures from Home. If I'm, yeah, Pictures from Home. And it, um, I, I really totally relate to, uh, to, to this series. He, he just photographs his family home and his parents mainly. And I really, really love his eye and his composition and the colors and the feel he transmits. So uh, it's, a, it's a big influence. His, his work big influence yeah. is a big influence for me. Okay. And this is Luigi Girri, I think. 
Ja. Luigi, ja, Luigi Pitti, an Italian photographer that I deeply admire. Yeah. I just really love the feeling it transmits. Also shoots a lot of the sea, the, sea, the beaches in Italy. He shoots mainly portraits in Italy. Yeah. Italy is one of my dream countries, one of my favorite countries. So I really relate to his visual style also. They're kind of um, a bit away from reality. Yeah. And I really like his style. It really speaks to me a lot. And this one? And this one, of course, I forgot her name, although I just saw her work in an exhibition in Vienna a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, uh, Tina Barney, exactly, Tina Barney, mm -hmm. uh, as well, she, uh, in the 80s, documented her family life, she comes from a quite um, higher class uh, background, and I love this photo, I love the colors, the composition, the woman, maybe her mother, I don't know, looking at the camera, and you see her in the mirror still, and the woman next to her, it's just beautiful, mm -hmm. and there are many photos in this series that are extremely interesting. Yeah. Everybody should check out her work. It's really, really Yeah, definitely. We will, yeah. I will write it uh, down. Okay, thank you. So now I'm going to see what Amina sent me. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, it was kind of hard to... Yeah, it's hard. I know. I, I know. <laughs> so, yeah, so I... Yeah, it's... Uh, mm, give me a second. Up. So for me, um, this is Dana uh, Dan Markosian, of course, I think she's like one of the most well-known photographers. Um, this is from her series, Inventing My Father. And this was actually one of the first projects I've seen uh, when I was digging into personal stories. Um, and I saw it specifically through a workshop I did with Hiba Khalifa uh, here in Cairo. Hiba Khalifa is an Egyptian uh, photographer whose work revolves around um, women and um, yeah, her work is very important, honestly. So yeah, so da so Diana's project, uh, Inventing My Father, was, was very um, kind of related so much to my own side of my grandmother, like kind of discovering my own grandmother. So yeah. Yeah, it was good. And then we have... <laughs> yeah, that, this is, okay, so, so when I was thinking about what images really inspire me, I thought of how basically I'm really much inspired by basically anything that I that I come across. And so um, for me, this was a letter that um, when I read, it was um, between my grandfather and a friend from India. They were exchanging stamps. And I just realized also this was how um, I just love the typewriter, like how they used to write with a typewriter. And, and this was one of the first uh, inspirations for the... Um, the room installation mm -hmm. prop. and I included this here because basically I just feel like basically photo we don't really need to be, be inspired by photographs we can really be much inspired by anything an object uh, just a, okay. a situation that happened on the streets or anything so so for me this is like a reference to anything that could be inspiring okay and yes this is also, uh, so this is my grandfather with his friends. Through, okay. Uh, yes. And it's like one of the first selfies I think he ever took. And so uh, also it was very, like, it was different for me to see my grandfather this way because I didn't know that he had this playful side in him. So this was also kind of an inspiration uh, through my work as well. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Great. Very inspiring. Okay, thank you. So I saw someone wanted to ask some question. Yes, of course. Um, I so it's time. <laughs> we are not a lot of... Oh, okay. So the question. Hello, everyone. My question for Amina about the nostalgic vintage texture and color she uses in her photos in general like postcards from Cape Town, for example. Can you share with us your technique? Do you hand paint your black and white photos? Use Photoshop or filters? What are the gears you are using? So, um, yeah, I know. What, so, so these pictures specifically, uh, they're taken on film. 
and I was playing with um, after I developed them I was playing on Photoshop honestly like inverting them playing with the colors trying to paint them on Photoshop it's all based like ma made through um, through Photoshop but these are actual like those are film not digital the the the, the, the project uh, what if my grandfather had written no she's asking about the the so I have a series on Instagram that's ah, okay uh, yeah it's uh, it's uh, images from Cape Town and like pigeon images okay okay so yeah so this specifically was taken with film camera and um, after developing them I would bring them back to Photoshop and play around on Photoshop honestly and I, I realize in, in your work there is a lot of writing as well yes yeah writing is a huge part of my process honestly because for me it helps me to um, basically um, kind of um, understand what it is that I'm feeling and understand what it is that I want to talk about so um, and it's come a long way because I, I wasn't able at first I wasn't really a person that knows how to knows how to express honestly yeah. so photography really helped me a lot and writing uh, for me is, is is a major element because it kind of it puts it like it's like a picture you know it's like mm -hmm. another side of a picture that's not there um, so yeah, it's, it complements the images and complements the whole work. And Tanya, I saw, so there is a little, there is film, you film as well, but is there any, like you do photography and there is all the things that you add in your work, like writing or, or just uh, The writing, I wish I, I would uh, be able to, I, I don't know, I have like a kind of a blockage when it comes to writing. I just can't, I can't write until now. I'm trying, but it's not flowing out of me. Yeah, well. So writing is not a part of my practice until now. I hope in the future. Yeah. Um, I don't, uh, let me think. I have a few older uh, projects that, where I use Photoshop, especially for the series Cell. Mm -hmm. That is a self-portrait yeah. series where yeah. I double on an image so that I did in Photoshop. But with my later series, um, especially when I shoot on uh, medium format film, I don't touch them at all. Yeah. Yeah. And I leave them as they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think there is no more qu Oh! I just sent something to... Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> so no. there is no more questions. So my last question is any advice <laughs> for there is a lot of young photographers who are willing to do series photographic series and they don't know how to start how to end how to how any advice can you give them <laughs> i would say like really follow your your instincts follow your heart and what you yeah, what you exactly. want to do exactly yeah Yes. And just uh, take the camera and go out and take photos, and then come back home, print them out on a crappy printer at home, it doesn't matter, cut them out and put them on the floor or on the bed, whatever, and look at them. That's what I always do. It helps me so much to pair the photos and to organize them, to have them, to see what size would be nice, you know. It's really Yeah, it's helpful. important to have them on the wall, you have another... Well, on the, I never did it on the wall, I always do it on the floor, because oh, I well. can like, playing uh, during childhood on the floor <laughs> so, it's like, um, it's, like was, a, it's like a puzzle well, you have to yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. but there there is so much ways to approach there is not one way you know and yeah. sometimes they want to tell us that there is just one this way but everyone has his path and everyone has their own, uh, their, their I own. Think the only advice we can give is that you need to find out what works best for you because for Amina it's different than for me, for you, yes, me, it's different. You know? it's, uh, everyone has their own way. And you need to search for that, what, what it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It, it thank was you very inspiring, um, this uh, discussion. And I'm, I can wait to see your projects finished. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you, Sonia. Thank, so thank you so thank much. You. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.